Jesus said, Whom do men say that I am? Although it is almost 2,000 years since this question was put to the disciples at Caesarea Philippi, the issues involved in the answer are as great and as vital today. The people believe Jesus to be one of the prophets raised from the dead. In his preaching, he was like John the Baptist. In his prayer life, like Elijah. In his compassion, like Jeremiah, the weeping prophet. John they had seen and heard, and the Old Testament prophets were familiar to them, for their characters were clearly portrayed in the sacred scriptures. Evidently, there was some striking characteristic in each of these good men that found a counterpart in the life of the Nazarene. Jesus was indeed the embodiment of all that was good and noble in the others, but he was more than men. He was God manifest in the flesh. He was the Messiah who had come to earth to reveal God to the sons of men and to die not the death of a martyr, but to atone for the sins of the world. Speaking reverently, he was what he claimed to be, or else he was not a good man. Furthermore, if Jesus was not the Son of God, he was either a deceiver or a mistaken fanatic. Listen, did he not claim to be able to satisfy the pangs of spiritual hunger by saying, I am the bread of life. He that cometh to me shall never hunger. Did he not offer to quench the thirst of the parched soul when he said, Whosoever drinketh of the water that I shall give him shall never thirst? Did he not declare that he held the keys of the prison house of death? Listen to his words. I am the resurrection and the life he that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. Did he not claim to be the one and only entrance into the kingdom of God when he said, I am the door by me, if any man enter in, he shall be saved. The words of Jesus of Nazareth were stamped with divine authority just as much as were his miracles. Peter's immortal reply to this vital question is the only one that can be given by those who would possess the life that is eternal. Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. The Four Square Gospel. Four Square. Blessed Word. Inspired word, like every other Bible word, it is God-breathed. It is found back in the Old Testament, where the altar of burnt offering and the altar of incense are both declared to be four square. The former, a type of Calvary, was situated inside the gate of the open courtyard which surrounded the tabernacle. The latter was placed before the veil right in the holy place, and it speaks of the adoration praise and worship which should continually ascend to God from the heart of the believer. In the New Testament we have a glimpse of the home of the redeemed, a city which lieth four square. We have linked the word four square with gospel in order to show forth the four-sided aspect of the gospel of Christ, namely salvation, healing, baptism of the Holy Spirit, and the second advent of Christ. The four-square gospel is to be seen in the types and shadows of the Old Testament. It was preached by our Lord during his earthly ministry and afterwards by the apostles in their day. History has recorded the fact that God has never left the world without a witness to this glorious message throughout the present dispensation. In our day there are multitudes who are testifying to the blessings they have received through this ministry. The greatest revival that the world has ever witnessed is taking place through the four-square gospel message. Hundreds of thousands of lives and homes are being transformed where it is received, and tens of thousands are being miraculously healed of all kinds of diseases. 
there is something in the message that meets the need of all, for spirit, soul, and body. Through Jesus, the Savior, the sinner can find eternal life and the forgiveness of sins. Through Jesus, the healer, the one who is racked with pain, can find deliverance and healing. Through Jesus, the baptizer in the Holy Spirit, the helpless believer can be clothed with power from on high. Through Jesus, the coming king, the complete redemption of the mortal body is the hope of the saint. It is the message for the last days. And I believe God's last call to the world to repent and turn to Christ. Four square gospelers stand four square on the word of God and accept the Bible in its fullness as the inspired word. Our only hope for the nation and for the world is to get back to the Bible, back to the word of God, which in the days that are gone stood as a bulwark and defense back to the book for which our fathers lived and died, back to the book which alone teaches the righteousness that can exalt a nation. Lift up your heads for your redemption draweth nigh. This injunction given by our Lord over 1900 years ago was undoubtedly intended for the closing days of this dispensation. Who can discern the signs of the times without realizing its present-day application? Who can read the time on the prophetic clock without seeing that the hour of complete redemption is about to strike? Nationally and internationally, all standards are being removed as unstable. The world is drifting into a time of indescribable tribulation. Prophecies which fell from the sacred lips of Christ have been translated into history before our very eyes. For nation is rising against nation, kingdom against kingdom. There are wars and rumors of wars, and the whole world is as an armed camp. We are most assuredly living in this inevitable darkest hour that precedes the glorious advent dawn. While nations are preparing on a colossal scale for war, the cry of peace and safety is being sounded forth throughout the world. In this again, prophecy is being fulfilled. For, saith the sacred scripture, the day shall come when they shall preach peace and safety, when sudden destruction shall come upon them. How little do the people understand that there can be no peace apart from Christ, and no safety outside his pavilion. In the religious world, Christendom is revealing the malignant growths of higher criticism and modernism, and the unmistakable latter-day sign of the falling away from the faith is glaringly revealed. These are but a few of the dark signs of the end of the age. As we see these things coming to pass, it is with consolation that we obey the command of our Lord to look up. We do not look out, for our hope is not centered on anything or anyone around us. The outlook is dark indeed. Our hope is centered in the coming Christ. Therefore, we gladly look up, for the outlook is exceedingly glorious. There is a sign of quite another character. It is the worldwide outpouring of the Holy Spirit with supernatural signs that tens of thousands of born-again people are experiencing in every country under the canopy of heaven, in fulfillment of prophecy given in both the Old and New Testaments, God is pouring out his Spirit. Believers are everywhere receiving the Holy Spirit as the disciples did on the day of Pentecost. Miracles of healing, just as marvelous as those recorded in the Acts of the Apostles, are taking place in every land, for the miraculous gifts are in evidence today just as they were in the first days of Christianity. In fulfillment of scriptural prophecy, the showers of latter rain are falling upon the thirsty, and the true church, which consists of all who are born again, is being prepared for the imminent return of her Lord.